Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matty with the Toasty Bros. And today we bring you a classic video. This is a $250 gaming PC in 2022. And it's one of those easy videos where you take a pre-build that has a bunch of the core components in it, add a graphics card, upgrade with an SSD, and boom, you have something that's capable of playing games in 2022. Let's just not waste any more time and dive right into it. But wait, we gotta pay some bills. A word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Lexar, your one-stop shop for all your storage needs. Today we are looking at the Hades RGB RAM kit featuring absolutely beautiful RGB, capacities up to 32 gigabytes, and super fast 3600 megahertz speed that is rock solid stable, making it perfect for your next Intel or AMD gaming rig. But don't forget that Lexar has SSDs as well, like the NM620, with read speeds up to 3300 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 3000 megabytes per second, and capacities of 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, and 1 terabyte. If you're looking to build a new PC or just upgrade your rig, then definitely consider the Hades Memory and NM620 SSD by checking the link down below. And special thanks again to Lexar for sponsoring today's video. So we do this quite often here at the Toasty Rose. We basically just buy a used office computer off of eBay, but you can look everywhere. OfferUp, eBay, Facebook, Newegg, Amazon, they all sell these old new PCs like this, especially in the small form factor variant because most people think they're not upgradable, but we got you covered. We got some ways to upgrade them that actually adds quite a bit of performance and even has a slight upgrade path for the future. And I'm reading this checklist right here and it shows built-in webcam. I don't think that has that, but you know what? We're gonna go ahead and open <laughs> this thing up, see what it looks like, and then talk about each individual part and how it makes up this little gaming PC. All right guys, so we're switching it up a little bit. Normally we'd have a nice Dell Optiplex logo on the front, but today we actually have an HP Slimline and it doesn't even say the exact one. So I'm gonna look at this little sheet here. We have a Compaq Elite 8300 SFF. Now, if you want a little bit more upgrade path, you could get one that is a mid tower. But like I said, we wanted to go small here. We think that the small ones, a lot of people, they don't realize that small can still do things. I mean. Small's fine, honestly. Small's like, fine, it's okay. It's all good. But as you can see here, we got an actual like micro ATX board. We actually have like a passively cooled heatsink, which is really interesting. These definitely look different than an Optiplex. But the good news is we have this right here. We actually have three PCI lanes, but obviously we're only really interested in probably this black one here. It looks like these are both 16X. We just wanna make sure that uh, we're using like the main PCIe one. Yeah, this one right here is X4. So we definitely wanna use this black one right here. But basically we're gonna be adding this RX 550 to the equation. And this is actually a four gig RX 550. Performs a little bit less than like a GT 1030, I believe. I don't know by how much. We'll, we'll do some gaming to kind of test it out. But it does only have a single display port and I think that's two mini display ports. So that's something to keep in mind. You are kind of sacrificing display outs. But you can buy adapters. They're like five bucks for one of these. So uh, we got that and then we also have this. This is an optional upgrade because we paid, I don't know if we have the price in here. It doesn't look like we do, but I think we paid like $80, maybe a hundred for this thing. And this has an i7 3770H, which is a four core eight thread. And it also has a 500 gig hard drive and eight gigs of RAM. So this system, I, we can plug in it right now and it works. It literally has Windows 10 Pro on it, ready to go. But we were like, no, we need to add an SSD. So this is an optional upgrade. It costs like 20 extra dollars, 24 extra dollars. So you don't have to do it. We're not really budgeting in the price, but we really recommend doing it. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to do these upgrades. So we go bloop and then we go bloop. And then we do a little drippy droppy. That almost didn't fit, I got a little scared. And boom. I'm just gonna pray that this is actually the 16X. I don't know what else it would be. They made it, they made a different color for a reason, right? So we got our graphics card installed, feeling nice and sturdy. So now we're gonna go ahead and do some thermal pasta. This should be pretty, pretty easy and self-explanatory. I'm too lazy to actually unplug this stuff, but you really just should, because it'd be a lot easier. But we just got four flathead screws there, or if you really have that, I think it's like a I don't even know what, oh, it's a, one of those star bits. Um, you could use that as well, but fill it flathead much easier. Fill it flathead. Fill it flathead, you're I'm all, I'm all over the place. So we're gonna go ahead and get some some nice Arctic MX-5 on there, or some some cooler master uh, gel. Just something that's a little bit better than, yeah. because Oh that's, my goodness. Yeah, this is an i7, a four core eight thread, and they're not super power hungry um, in today's standards, but that's pretty bad. I mean, we're definitely, we're definitely losing some performance off that. That's the biggest thing you gotta remember about these is they probably have never been changed. And this computer is about 10 years old, I believe. So yeah. it, it definitely needs some love. And you can see that i7-3770, still a great CPU. And the best part about third gen is that's about when they started supporting USB 3. So I think on the front here, we actually have like, uh, let's see, no USB 3s, okay. On the back though, we have four USB 3s. Oh, yeah. So that's definitely good. And um, you definitely want all that. So we're just gonna 
Get all this old stick. You were just using some thermal, not some thermal. God, I am all over the place. We are just using some rubbing alcohol pads uh, to get off this old thermal paste. I'm not really too concerned about getting it all off. I just want like most of the, the middle of it off. Blue. All right, so that should be plenty for that lie seven. Go ahead and get this back down. Yes, use the opposing corners. You don't want to, you don't want to do one side all at once because that's how you, that's how you bend a CPU die or bend some pins or bend your coolers. All kinds of things that you can bend. You don't want to bend nothing. Let's see if we can actually finagle this back in here. Basically, got to that air tunnel. Start it down here. Get all the cables on. It really makes you wonder how much more efficient this really was than just doing a cooler. Yeah, I don't know. It's a giant hunk of aluminum and copper. I guess it'd be better since it is a lot of copper and aluminum and just, I don't know, man. How does this actually mount? I think it just goes on the fan. Yeah, and it just clips on it. Simple, all right, simple, easy. Let's test this thing. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our SSD. You might need another SATA, I can't you tell. need another SATA? I'll see That's the SATA master. I'll see a spare one floating around. They're definitely kind of hidden. I'm just gonna steal it from the CD drive. <laughs> He's still from the CD drive or the, uh, the hard drive. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we can, we can add an extra real quick. Let's make Here sure we there's, go. Yeah, he, Matt's, Matt's gonna go grab Going it. on a field trip, guys. We're going on a trip. All right, here's our little hmm. bin of SATA cables. Look at that, that looks beautiful. Man, I like how this thing is like, it's very modular, how everything just comes apart. Ooh, thank you. We got an angled one, can we make that work? So as you can see, we have a couple of extra SATAs open on the board. Looks like we got a couple there. Um, we're actually gonna use, I think SATA one is actually not even being used. Is there a SATA zero? Um, oh yeah, that is being used, Never mind. All right, we're gonna steal SATA zero. We're gonna put this over into SATA one and we're gonna put our SSD on SATA zero so that it'll auto boot to that every time. But obviously we're all gonna have to reinstall Windows with this. Okay, that's one thing to really keep in mind. I feel like we don't make that apparent enough is that like you are gonna have to reinstall Windows by doing this. Yes. Um, but we, we still think it's worth it. Yes. You can use our GBG mall. Get a code, save some money. I don't know if there's a sponsor of this video. Probably not. They may be, you never know. You never know. But they're always in the description. <laughs> oh yeah, they are. All right, so I'm just gonna plug this in here. Now, if you really wanna go all out, you could easily mount this. Since there's not a lot of moving space, I'm just gonna leave it here for now. Double-sided adhesive it, whatever. But here we go. Pop that back down. And then we're gonna swing this back down. These HPs definitely have a lot more like just moving, swingy in parts and whatnot than like a normal, Oh God, this is a weird power. I just realized this is the power supply. This is a very strange looking power supply. And dude, it is not wanting to go back in place. No, that, that is not right. Oh God, what have I done? If he touches it wrong, it might just go boom and explode. Tell us, we made that power supply go boom. Crevice. So the, it looks like it's designed for two different sizes. It looks like this part right here goes back here. Okay, so that's in. We'll go ahead and stick this panel back on there. Don't do not do how I just did it. I just was not paying enough attention when I took that off. So it's one of those things where I took it off and I had no clue how I got it off because I didn't even know it came out. <laughs> All right, we got that back on. That's on there. Can I play Fortnite now? You should definitely be able to play Fortnite. This would be really great for like esports gaming. Um, AAA titles, uh, what do you think we're gonna test? Probably we're gonna go with the huge Fortnite, Minecraft, um, Valorant. You think maybe. we'll do a AAA? Yeah, we'll try a AAA. Yeah, so maybe Call of Duty, maybe Halo, because we have four gigs of VRAM, so in yep. theory we should be able to play all those, but we're gonna pop the side panel back on and then show this in. One other thing I... Now, one other thing I'm gonna do is I noticed that we have both black slots taken off, or sorry, we had one black and one white. We're gonna go ahead and put this one down in the black slot here because that should allow it to run in dual channel. I know it might've worked just fine before, but we're just doing this as more of a cautionary thing. Now we're gonna game. All right, guys, now that we have this $250 PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a handful of titles, those being Fortnite, Minecraft, and Halo Infinite. We'll talk about Halo Infinite here in a second, but we wanted to show you just basically what this PC is for and what this PC is not for, because we get a lot of comments on these really cheap PCs that they're, oh, they're just made for esports, and that's exactly right. Right now, for $250, that's really all you can do. Of course, you could pick up an Xbox One S or any sort of console, 
um, an older generation console that is, and be able to get a probably better gaming experience. But for those who are just really adamant on getting on PC, and I totally understand, we love PC, it's a great ecosystem. This is what you're gonna get for $250 without any really hard deal hunting. Deal hunting is a big factor here. Let's just talk about those benchmarks real quick. Now in Fortnite in performance mode at 1080p, you do get 60 plus FPS. There are some stutters here and there, but on average, you're anywhere between 60 to 100 FPS. Games like Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, Valorant, CSGO, no problem getting 60 plus FPS. If that's all you're wanting to play and you wanna play on PC and have all the features of a PC along with being able to game, this is the computer for you. Don't wait any longer, build this thing. It's really simple to put together, but you are gonna be limited in some higher end games, as I mentioned at the beginning of this benchmark run, which we'll talk about here in a second. But Fortnite, really easy game to run. You could lower some settings a little bit. I had epic view distance on performance mode, or you could try doing the old school method of DirectX 12 in non-performance mode. I've heard that does run a little bit better right now than performance mode sometimes. So experiment with the settings a little bit, but at worst, you will get at least 60 FPS on performance mode. Next up in Minecraft, which is a game a lot of people want to play on PC, you get 60 plus FPS. You get the uh, added support of getting awesome mods and a lot of different things in the Minecraft gaming ecosystem that you don't really get on console. And a lot of people want to jump to PC for that. And this did run with limited stutter. Sometimes when you're playing Minecraft, there's a lot of major dips that you have to deal with. But this time when you're playing this game, everything loaded in pretty quickly and had no real major problems overall. Now where this PC comes to struggle a little bit is Halo Infinite. We had to drop all the way down to 720p. We got only an average of 26 to 30 FPS and it was very stuttery. Now if you're absolutely desperate to try Halo Infinite, you can definitely play it. As you can see, I got a couple kills, but it is not an enjoyable experience. And that just goes to show you, this is meant for esports titles, lower end games that are easier to run. And if you just want a PC that can do things on the side along with play some games, this is the one for you. But if you want to play higher end games, I highly suggest saving up your money and looking at some of the other higher end build options we have on our channel. Now, if you want to see this PC tested in some other games, let me know in the comment section down below. We will be doing a full gaming setup around this PC, and we can throw in some different games in there if you want me to mix it up a little bit. So let me know down below. So now that we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how about I bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. Okay, guys, we just got done benchmarking this slim beauty right here, and it actually works pretty good in esports titles. You were able to play Fortnite, Roblox, Minecraft, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, the list goes on. All those games are run flawlessly, even at medium, sometimes even high settings 1080p. And the AAA titles, you're probably looking at like older AAA titles. You're not going to be playing the newest Halo Infinite at great settings, at least when you're looking at like 30 FPS, 720p. You're not going to be playing, you know, Vanguard or Warzone getting like 60 plus FPS. But if you're okay with lowering some settings, going 720p, lowering the uh, render scale and not expecting like 100 FPS, then you can definitely do some AAA titles as well. For $250, that's really all you can ask for. And if you're looking to build this PC, links in the description down below will be affiliate links and it will help us out. And uh, yeah, if you have any other price points you want us to uh, make a PC build at, let us know in the comment section down below. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Peace out. So this PC right here will be for sale as well as many other twins that look just like it and we have high-end PCs as well. PCBros.tag is our PC selling business. We sell PCs just like this we feature on the channel and as Jackson mentioned, some higher-end builds with a bunch of RGB and new RTX and AMD cards. So definitely take a look at those. PCBros.tag, see you guys later, goodbye.